Hello, I'm Jason with Honeywell Security and here to show you how simple it is to program the Lyric all-in-one control panel from scratch to sending signals. Uh, before I do the installation though, I do want to show you just a handful of things. Kind of show you what we have here. Um, so I've got a, a couple handy dandy tools that we may need right here. Most important, I have all my customer information right here. I have my work order. My work order gives me my name, address, information, gives me my zone information, gives me my total connect information. I've also went ahead and asked the consumer for their Wi-Fi username and password. For this purpose today, I'm going to scan and type in the username and password, but I'll also show you that the Lyric does support WPS. So if for some reason you're out doing the installation and the consumer's not home, you can go to their router. Most consumer routers made today support WPS. Click the WPS button, initiate a WPS session from the Lyric, and you can do your connection that way. All of our zone information um, that we're gonna need. I've got my iPhone in case I need it. I've got my iPad. Everything I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna do it on the computer for this particular video, but there's another great video out there completely setting up the Lyric from the iPad. We're going to install the Lyric all-in-one, the LCP500L. The 300L is the gateway. We're going to install a Lyric secondary keypad, a Lyric siren, a six technology Lyric smoke detector with heat detector built in, the six motion detector. Six motion detector is a great product in that it, it not only is a traditional motion, gives you full pet immunity, but it gives you selectable pet immunity and selectable sensitivity remotely from the cloud. We're not going to do a glass break today, but you can also do all that as well from the glass break. You got remote sensitivity adjustments, which are pretty nice. We're going to put in two six contacts, the six CT. Um, we are going to put in one of the new, very exciting uh, six mini contacts. So I'm going to do a 5800 mini as well. First thing we want to do, log into AlarmNet 360. If you don't have access to AlarmNet 360 today, you want to be sure to, uh, to log in, create a log on, um, work with your central station um, or your office to get uh, the correct user levels to, uh, to add accounts, delete accounts, program accounts. So we're logged in. What we want to do is we're going to program a new account. So we'll click on new account. And that's right there on the home screen. Very quick, very easy. So we're gonna program a Lyric controller. Now, it's gonna give us a couple options when we log in. Do we wanna, is this a new customer? Is this an existing customer? Is it residential or commercial? So we're, it's a new customer, it's residential. Jason, last name Lutz. We're gonna do the drop down here, my mobile phone. 615. 545-2157. Our customer email, our customer location. So this is gonna be the Lyric demo video. Address. It's our Lyric controller, it's revision one. What's our Mac ID? I went ahead and took that off of the box already, but it's on the outside of all the box. It's also on the inside of the Lyric itself. They always start with 00, zero D0, zero, 2D. So all we really have to enter is the last six numbers. C9, 0D, 5D. In our CRC number. And then what's our alarm reporting number going to be? It's going to be 996C6043. And then we're going to hit continue. When we hit continue, what it's doing is it's going out to the AlarmNet database and it's saying, hey, is this radio good? Can I use it or has it already been used for somebody else? So once we clicked on next, it goes out and it comes back and it verifies our communicator successfully. We know we have a good communicator. So now we go down, we've got our account information. One of the things that we can do are default templates. So today we just have the one template. Down here, what's our supervision gonna be? Um, we'll go ahead and make it daily supervision. Now, one of the things that you notice here, it's already checked and you can't uncheck it, but we do now provide advanced protection logic. It's built into all of our systems, all of our Lyric systems, and it comes standard. But we could do two-way voice over both cellular and or Wi-Fi. Um, we could do video alarm verification. We can do Lyric lock. 
So what is Lyric Lock? Lyric Lock is the ability to not only lock out the alarm control panel from being taken over by your competitors, but also lock down all of the RF6 devices where they become married to the control panel and have to be unlocked before they can be taken over or used somewhere else. So Total Connect is turned on by default. We should be selling Total Connect on every single job that we install. So we are gonna give us our Total Connect account name, our username, auto populated with our email address. Do we wanna do user code management through Total Connect? Well, absolutely. So we'll put in a, a panel master code. One, two, three, four. What kind of Total Connect do we want? Basic, plus, premium? Let's do plus. And then we've got some additional options. So our first option here is information services. We're gonna give you one day free weather built into the Lyric. But maybe you wanna offer five day free weather, five day weather. Um, you can click on information services and offer five day weather. Automation services. Automation is critically important. It's a driving factor for our industry today, but it's also a driving factor for reducing attrition and getting customer engagement with the system. Advertising services. Advertising services is the ability to, to push messages down to the Lyric. Video doorbell. This is the new Skybell Trim HD. Um, we can use this doorbell. One of the advantages with Total Connect is if we check this box here, is this a new Skybell account or an existing one? It's a new account. We can go through the entire setup process through Total Connect. We don't also have to have the Skybell app. Lyric does support uh, different demographics. Um, we'll leave us English today. Our time zones, our, our date format, our time format. One of the other things that we did is um, we want to make it easy to get customer engagement with the Total Connect notifications. Now, in my notes here on the work order from the salesperson, the customer would like text notifications on alarms and troubles. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go over here to uh, sensor alarm. We'll do sensor alarm cleared. And we're going to do sensor trouble, sensor trouble cleared. We're going to do all of our troubles, low batteries, and uh, even sensor bypass. And then we hit finish. Now, as you can see from the home page, and I'll scroll down here, we have kind of a, a basic refresh of everything that we entered. There's our total connect information. Oh wait, that's wrong. No, it's right. But if it's wrong, we click on here, the edit, and we can edit it. If we decided we wanted to add a doorbell, we can edit it from there. It's a pre-configured total connect account. It includes APL, and we're good to go. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna scroll back up here to the top, and we're gonna confirm the account creation. Now at that point, we have created the, the account in AlarmNet 360. Our battery is already pre-plugged in. If you'll notice, the system's dead. System doesn't power up until you actually put electricity on it. So we've got it, we've got our battery gone in. All we're gonna do now is plug in our transformer. It'll take a few minutes to power up, go through its power up cycle, and then connect into the AlarmNet 360 portal. We have powered up. You'll notice we're getting a system standby. Now we could wait two minutes and go through the system standby, or we could just hit the home key and that bypasses it out. Now, if we're in the system standby phase and we hit the home key, the first thing we're gonna get is our Wi-Fi configuration. And let's go ahead and set up to the customer's Wi-Fi. Now, so for today's purpose, we're gonna type in the Wi-Fi information. But like I said earlier, one of the things we can do is WPS and that starts a WPS connection, and then we go hit the WPS in our router. Security, tools, our master code, one, two, three, four. Wi-Fi configuration, scan access points, loots home, edit, password, we'll type in my password, and join. We're going to make a connection now. Device successfully added. We'll go back to the home screen. And if we notice, we're now making a connection and we are starting to sync our basic information. 
Our panel association has been completed. So because we've already created the account in AlarmNet 360, and because we already hit the register button on there, once the system powered up, you notice it didn't take very long, it took about two and a half to three minutes, we're getting a notification now on the home screen. We do have to accept the EULA agreement, so we're gonna accept that. The AlarmNet 360 communicator is in registration process. This operation will take about three minutes, and then we'll get a normal okay, but we are associated and online and really all we did was powered it up we've already had the radio pre-installed in it we did that earlier so once we've gone into the account management at that point now we'll see all of our customer information so we're going to configure our panel we've got sensors key fobs keypads user codes all of our information settings reporting, panel diagnostics, our event log, and then activity that we've done with AlarmNet 360. First one, sensors. Now, we can do sensors a couple of different ways. What we wanna do is add sensor. Now, when we get to the add sensor, it's gonna give us a handful of different options. We can go up here and we could change whatever type of device it is, and we could manually type in the the serial number or the MAC ID for many of our devices. We could enter all the pertinent information for each of our devices, or we can just do it the easy way. Learn. We click the learn button. The first time we do this, it will take about 40 seconds. And uh, to please wait, and we'll be ready here in just a second. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna start with our devices. We'll start with our door contacts. Our first one is our 5800 series contact. Now one of the things we have to do with 5800 series is we have to trip it twice. Along the second trip, you'll notice that we now have learned in, it's got a green, our serial number, zone number three, loop number one, it's a door, it's an entry exit, the default from the template is front door, save and add another. Save successfully, okay. And now we're gonna add our mini. We fault it, this is a six device, so we should just have to fault it once. It gives us a transmit, should be transmitting in. And we see up here we have a six mini contact. It's learned in, there's our Mac ID, zone number four, our software revision, it is a door. Um, it's the back door. So let's change that to perimeter. Save and add another. Save successfully, okay. We're gonna add another six contact. Again, we just pull the magnet apart, or if these were brand new in the box, we just pull the battery tab. You'll see here in a couple seconds, it will pop up that it's been learned. It's been learned, six contact, there's our MAC IDs, there's our zone, there's our software revision. It's a read switch, it's a door, it's an entry exit, and we're gonna call this one garage. And the cool thing is, is we just start to type in and it auto-populates, garage, door. Save and add another, okay. Second one, again, we just pull it apart. I don't know if you can see there, but we got a little flashing green under the plastic. That's telling us that it's transmitting. Learned in, six contact, all of our pertinent information. It's a door again. We're gonna make this one a perimeter, and we're gonna call this one the basement door. Basement, and it auto-populates with door. Save and add another. Next, we're gonna do is our motion detector. Our motion, pull the battery tab, and learn. Again, we've already pulled the battery tab, so what we wanna do is just Hit the button there on top, pop it open for just a second. We get a green light that we're transmitting. Pop the cover back on. We're gonna flip it upside down so we don't continue to trip it. We have motion detector, zone seven, interior follower, pet immunity. And we're gonna, call, we're gonna put this in the hall. Hallway motion sensor. Save and add another. Again, smoke detector, pull the battery tab or Pop the cover off, pop the cover back on, and it will put us back into the learn mode. Learned in, six smoke, get a confirmation chirp. 
Um, we have the option, do we want to make it a smoke or do we want to make it a heat? We're going to make it a smoke on this one. And we're going to call this the upstairs smoke detector. Save and add another. Okay. Now what we can do is pop it off the cover again. Put the cover back on again. And it'll transmit the serial number all over again. Now in very similar to 5800 series, you can't reuse the same thing over again. It's going to give us a conflict. But all we have to do is scroll down here and change this to heat. And now it's a separate loop number within the macro, within the Mac ID. And it's set up for heat detector. It's an upstairs heat detector. So now this can be two separate zones. Zone number seven is the smoke. And zone number eight is the heat detector. Save and add another. This is a cool device. This is one of the coolest things we've come out with. This is a full bi-directional wireless siren with enunciator. Um, again, to learn it, we pull the battery tab, or in my case, pop it off, pop it back on. We get a confirmation that it's going in, and it's wireless siren has learned in. We get a confirmation chirp, wireless siren, and we're gonna call this one upstairs as well. That's it. We click save, and we have just added in all of our sensors into the Lyric system. The only other thing that we want to do is we do have this really awesome secondary keypad. So we're going to go here to keypads, add to keypad, scroll over here to learn. It is going back out. It's making that connection through AlarmNet 360 again um, into the panel through the learn mode. It's requested the session. Again, we're, we're currently in red. Um, but we'll give it here a couple seconds and we'll boom, we'll go to green. Panel is in the learn mode and now we're ready to go. What we want to do now is just take it. it. comes from the factory with the battery already plugged in. So all we have to do is plug it in. It will power up. Within a couple seconds, it will go into the, uh, the learn mode. The pairing, what it's called the pairing mode, currently pairing with the system. We have a confirmation beeps. We have the lovely green check, six keypad, there's our Mac ID, there's our software version, and we go over here, we're gonna call this the master bedroom keypad. And we're gonna save. So we have completely programmed all of our devices into AlarmNet 360. The only thing left to do with this installation is to go down here to user codes. So the first thing we'll do in user codes is really where we would add users. So we scroll over, to new user. The username, Mr. Martin. Mr. Martin's user code is gonna be 9876, and we're gonna save him. Save successfully. The next one we have is settings. Settings is where we're gonna do all of our really critical information. Now our reporting information is all auto-populated as part of the original programming. We are operating on cellular with Wi-Fi primary. There's all of our IP information, cellular rollover, all of our alarm reporting delays, our daylight savings time, our current times, um, down under the area information. That's where we're gonna find our entry exit delays. Um, it's where we're gonna find our quick arm and quick exit and force bypass and, and different general functionality. Alarm reporting and all of our event log information. Reporting test is an interesting feature. Reporting test is really a, a spot where 